Hello and welcome to Unexplained Possibilities Podcast. I'm your host, Melvin the Crimson Taurus, and with me today is the third-eyed mystic herself, the ever-so-lovely Niema. Hello, everyone. So, how are you doing this afternoon? Oh, good, good. Woke up early, so I'm doing good. Well, your version of early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 1130 is pretty solid. <laughs> well, you know, it's not PM, so you're you're on the right track. Mm-hmm. So, hey, you know, take it when you can get it, right? Exactly. So today we have a very interesting show. We're going to go deep into something that I'm, I was just introduced to by Niema. And I, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I had my mind blown mostly because it's just so much information. And this is something that you can't just take a week, two weeks, not even like two months. This is something you really need to dig into. And we're going to discuss it. But before we do that, let's have a little bit of small talk. Well, you know. Okay, so Niema, do you know what my favorite animated Disney movie is? No, I do not. I know you don't because I never told you. It's Aladdin. <laughs> oh no, you have told me this before. Have I? Oh. I feel like I feel like you have. You've mentioned this before. And you don't Sorry, remember. Hmm. No, yeah, that's sad. (laughs) That's okay. But yeah, Aladdin is my all-time favorite Disney movie. I love it. Now, as you know, there is a live-action Aladdin film coming out, um, what is it, May 24th? (laughs) No way. Have you not seen the trailers for this? No, I haven't. Are you kidding? Darn it, I can't even do the small talk with you because you... What planet do you live on? Oh, <laughs> not this one, apparently. Uh, God darn it, Niamh, you totally... <laughs> Seriously, you haven't... You're the only person who doesn't know this. I don't even... Wow. I think I've seen memes about it before. Is it like the memes going on? Yeah, Will Smith's genie, mostly. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I've yeah, I've literally just seen the memes. <laughs> I didn't I had no idea it was Aladdin. I thought it was just a random genie thing, like no idea. Wow, I don't even know what to say about that. You know, I'm over here. I want to make some small talk before we get into the main topic and I get shot down right away. <laughs> so question for you then. So do you have regular TV? Yes, I do. I, I love how it's now that, regular TV. Like, what in the world? <laughs> yeah, I don't have, I mean, I don't do, like, direct TV. I don't do regular TV, like, You don't channels. do cable don't do or nothing. Yeah, well. Nope. Uh, even though in my age bracket, um, people are, quote, unquote, cord cutting, I refuse. I don't like streaming. And I don't like digital media. I like physically owning things and a schedule and all that stuff. And, you know, so I'm just stubborn like that. I refuse to get with the times. And the longer I could hold on to physical media and keeping the cord in and not being reliant on the Internet, well, the better it is. So believe me, I'm doing you all a favor. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> oh, trust me, man, because all your information's going out there and they're monitoring and then, you know, it's nuts. I, and then wait till they start making the uh, the super personalized ads that you're going to start seeing. I mean, they're already doing it, but it's going to be to well, the point where, uh, what? I was going to say, well, you know, you can turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> no, they still collect like, your data. Like- Oh, I'm like, well, you can make it so they don't give you as much personalized ads. Well, I just did that on my phone, and it's changed so much. You can <laughs> do that, but they still collect your data and store it somewhere. And 
Um, that's why all these permissions with the microphones and all that, like I turn all that stuff off. I get programs to block it, do whatever. Like, um, for mm -hmm. instance, with Facebook, like if you have a microphone and you use it for discussions or whatever, like somehow, I don't know how they do it, but somehow they are able to get some of the data that you're talking about and they will actually bring up an ad or something that you were literally just talking about where it's like what the heck just happened oh yeah oh yeah yeah i've had that happen multiple times and i was like i need to fix something yeah exactly <laughs> so wrong. so forget them man and yeah big brother sure is watching uh mm -hmm. so you know i i try to do my part to make it as hard as possible and cutting the cord and doing the streaming services the netflix hulus whatever it just makes it that much easier for them and like i said i don't like digital distrib distribution i prefer to physically own my media hmm. so but yeah all that from aladdin <laughs> that is that good for small talk <laughs> well we have one more thing and this one is kind of serious but it's also like it should people should have seen it coming so since you don't have quote unquote regular tv you probably haven't heard about this um and plus it's local to california but um at j sarah catholic high school they're having a swastika issue j sarah okay. catholic what, high school that? okay so a couple of weeks ago, students were at a party, and they had those red cups. I, what, what are they called? Red solo cups. And yeah, those party cups. Yeah, and they made beer them. Pong cups. You go to beer pong, huh? <laughs> <laughs> in the day. Back in the day. Okay. <laughs> yeah, last week. Um, <laughs> So they took those cups and they actually made them into a swastika symbol. And someone took a picture of it, put it on social media, it blew up. And of course, the local media got a hold of it and and it's blown up even more. And the school, they're trying to save face. And what they did was actually um bring in someone who was a holocaust survivor to speak to the students and everything oh, like that and you know it's a good thing and a bad thing and um the good thing is it's like oh wow you know you have respect for someone like this they've been through a lot you get a better understanding of why you probably shouldn't do this it's a bad thing because it's probably one or two pricks and they think it's a funny joke and well they're actually putting up more swastikas around the school they're putting up posters of swastikas hmm. and unfortunately because this was picked up by the media and everything they're doing it for laughs i think and it's only going to intensify i don't think it's going to be to the point where they're going to target a jewish person but it's pretty bad. It's like, what is your freaking problem? Which, what is their problem? Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Kids are just young and dumb. So I In mean, general. Yeah, but still, it's just so weird. I don't, I, I don't understand it. I, I mean, when I was that age, I don't know. I didn't do that. It was just. They did other stupid things, but they didn't do that. You know, there is a line. Right. But, oh well. So, and yeah, I think that's enough of the small talk. So, mm -hmm. are you ready to get into the meat and potatoes of today's show? Yes. All right. Yes, I am. Good. Because you're going to play a huge part in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I had no idea who this person was until Niema brought it up and, and said, oh, yeah, let's do a show on this guy's research. And the person in question is Wes Penray. And 
I am freshly new to his work and well when I was doing my research it was literally information overload because it is so much I of course went to YouTube first typed in Wes Penray and then I saw that he had a website went to the website and then I saw this thing that he was calling um, levels and, and stuff. I was like, levels of learning. What is this? And it's <laughs> five levels. And it goes, the first level he, he published February 16, 2011. And the last one came out and the fifth level came out in 2014. And you guys... There is a lot to this because we're talking about extraterrestrials, the multiverse, energy, masculine and feminine, universal energy, uh, wars and with heaven, you know, uh, Lucifer versus God and just some intense stuff. And it's like, oh, my gosh, where do you go? <laughs> like, how do you even start, <laughs> you know, like okay. uh, looking outside of the matrix and, and all that and ah. <laughs> yeah it's a lot it's a lot of material yeah i so where Nima, where did you begin so um i believe it was 2011 when i actually first started reading some of his material and that was the website that i just linked you uh in the chat so that got me hooked i started reading about the hidden hand and stuff like that and some of the information uh felt, you know, when you get that feeling of maybe it's true, maybe it's not, and you just get hooked into reading it. That's exactly what happened. And then ever since then, I haven't really read. Of course, I didn't read all his material because he has so much, but I've always been kind of going back to it here and now just to like, you know, check out some subjects, read a little bit. Because yeah, he does cover a up. lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot and it's really cool i mean it it does capture you and being someone who is into all that stuff you know it's like all right this is up my alley until you see everything and it's like oh this is a lot so yeah you had a few years <laughs> jump on me um okay. yeah so i'm gonna pick and choose a few things that caught my interest from jumping around of course and because it's just so much and it's just impossible to cover everything in an hour 15 minute show uh, we will most likely come back to this <laughs> so be prepared for that right. people but one of the things that caught me is karma now as most people know um to simplify it karma is universal energy what goes around comes around so if you do bad bad comes back to you if you do good good comes back to you and he he's interesting because he takes it a step further and he actually talks about how how karma is viewed in an overly simplistic way and we're kind of going into the law of attraction in a, in a in a sense and how we have a habit of blaming unwanted events on other people or the environment instead of blaming ourselves and we're like oh it's just karma god darn it so i need to do something good to counter this and he says like no you should look at karma as it's a tool and a, it's a tool of assistance for learning. You know, if bad things are happening, then there's a lesson to be learned. It's not because you did something bad and therefore it's coming around and getting you back. Hmm. What do you Good think? Point. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I would almost agree with that because everything is a learning curve and it's when stuff is going wrong it's not because you know maybe you fucked up and you're getting payback it's more like what can i learn from this situation so i don't keep running into it or 
stuff like that, I guess. Yeah, and okay, but then what about people? People who seem to have nothing but rotten luck. I mean, that that has to be a lot of learning. <laughs> but um, you... oh, what? No, go ahead. I already lost it. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> okay. But saying that, I'm wondering if they're having that rotten luck because they're too stubborn to actually learn the lesson. Like, after reading that, because I never looked at karma as a way of teaching lessons to yourself and going down a new type of spiritual path. I just literally thought of it as in a simplified way. You put mm -hmm. out what you want to get back. So you could be the nicest person in the world. And you could be an idiot and, you know, you keep walking down this uh, sidewalk that has gum there and you keep stepping in it every time and and messing up your new shoes. It's like, why does this keep happening to me? It's such <laughs> bad luck. And it's like, well, no, it's not really bad luck. Just look where you're going and don't step on the gum or take another sidewalk. Right. But, yeah. But we're so stubborn that it's like, well, no, this is the quickest way to my office or home. Even though there's a perfectly clean sidewalk, yes, yeah, a little further, but you don't have to worry about gum. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter how nice you are. There's ways to be too nice. <laughs> like, you don't want to keep being nice to people who are deliberately hurting you or whatever it is. You got to learn. Learn. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, we learn from this uh, uh, the bizarre relationship. You are not very nice. Oh, they're gonna break up with the one armed man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, oh, what happened, dear? I lost my arm. It's okay, though. I still have you about that. <laughs> hey, I have my reasoning, okay? Uh, I mean, yeah, everyone has their reasons. So that's mm -hmm. that's what that's the thing. If if you if you can sleep at night, <laughs> you're doing okay. <laughs> but yeah, that that karma thing though, it really that one in particular being one of the first things I read spoke to me because I actually sat down and was like, "Huh, there's something to this." What? Yeah. What do you remember? What paper that was in? Oh, I could tell you. It was in the first level. And oh, okay. it's um, part of the law of attraction. It's 1.1 karma, a uh, karma oh, okay. and law of attraction. Cute. So, and it, it really got me to thinking and, you know, it also got me to thinking that we as humans, as people, we really do like to play the blame game. And the fact of the matter is, sometimes things just happen. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's to blame. It's not your fault. It's not someone else's fault. Mess happens. And, okay. you know, and it's how do you deal with it? Like, that's the thing. How do you deal with mess happening? And I think that, in part, will determine... Well, a lot of things in your life, actually. Yeah, it's a learning curve. So Now, what's this thing? Maybe you'll know about this, but what's this thing about psych psychic vampirism? You know, I haven't read his opinion on it, um, but I just think it's, you know, people just trying to purposely drag you down with their bad energy. That's how I see it. But he might be way more intense than that. I don't yeah, know. Well, you know, so I've heard of energy vampires before. And I've heard of, of course, the vampire vampires. Blue. Not the Twilight <laughs> ones. You know, they don't sparkle oh, in the sun. But the real blade, I'm going to kill you vamps. And this psychic vampire... You know, it's it, it's like an energy vampire, and and it's like they literally suck the positiveness, the energy out of you. And the thing is, is it 
because of it's an intentional or unintentional. And, you know, he was saying that they're not large in population. It's only five to eight percent of them. You know, at first I was taking it as a metaphor, but no, he's like, no, these guys are real. And. Ooh, excuse me. And he was saying that part of the thing with the psychic vampire is that they cause you to doubt yourself. They they have you question your fate, your destiny, even your sanity. And you start saying everything is your fault. You'll never amount to anything, this and that. And interestingly enough, he says there's still a lesson to be learned from that. And, I agree. and the thing is, though, you know, like these psychic vampires, I'm, I want to know, like, are they aware of what they're doing? Well, I guess they are because they are feeding off your energy. And could they actually be people who seem to have all the luck in the world? And it's because they're taking other people's energy and creating their own reality that brings them fortune. Hmm. Good question. You know, or if we look at it from a metaphorical sense, which I prefer to do, you know, they're like parasites and it's not exactly symbiotic, but they're going to hang around and they're only good for one thing. And that's making you feel bad. And unfortunately, and when you disconnect from them, they are going to do whatever it takes to, to hang on. They're going to cry. They're going to beg, plead. I'll give you gold, you know, anything. And I'm seeing that as a metaphor for people that you know in your private lives people that you might care about but when you stop and really think about it what have they done positive for you not saying they have to give you a gift or anything but <laughs> what have they done to mentally boost you up fill you up with some positive energy back you up something no matter how big or small it is just something and what have you done for them? You've given to them. You, you've been there when they said they needed help, but you know, but they give nothing back in return. Even though you're not really seeking anything, but it would be something nice. And I'm like, wow, these people are parasites, and you do have to get rid of them because mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you find yourself even though it's a gradual thing, but you find yourself losing yourself and you just, you feel that dark cloud just come over you and then they show up all happy and perky. Like, hey buddy, what's wrong? Oh, that's okay. Things could always be worse. You know, like, yeah, well, okay, I guess. And then they suck your energy again. Like, hey, you got 10 bucks. I, I want to get a bite. Yeah, sure. Here you go. But I... <laughs> I am seeing that, like, even though he's looking at it as an actual entity, I'm looking at it as more of a me metaphorical sense. And it, it's just something that, again, it made me stop and think because I think everyone has someone like that or had someone like that in their life where they don't right. do anything for you. They are literally a tick. Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. So I, I know he didn't intend for it to be looked at that way, but that's how I'm looking at it. And either way, it's some type of knowledge gained from his work. So be happy, Wes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would think about it more as people, someone I know that purposely tried to drain me of my energy and made me feel, you know, less than or made me question my sanity. Yeah, and, you know, like, you just got to get rid of people like that. Or, if at all possible, flip the game around. <laughs> Good luck with that one, though. Yeah, that's, yeah, some of them have you beat hands down. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, just... God, that's pass out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, but... 
but it is something to be aware of and I literally and it's so funny because I I told you about the events of um Monday <laughs> and and Sunday night. Yeah. And perfect example. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like what the heck? Uh, I don't know how that happened. Just but, here to ruin your day. <laughs> yeah, so but whatever, you know, take the good with the bad. Yeah. Now, what is something that really stood out for you when you were um, reading over the different levels? Uh, well, of course, when I first started getting into it, it was more about uh, the hidden hand and the founding families, kind of like Illuminati type mm -hmm. of stuff. And then right before we got on, it was kind of going over the whole Lucifer, Elohim type of stuff. And I got interested in that. So I'm probably going to finish reading about that because that's something that really just tugs at me. Now, I what, know, what about really, it tugs at you? Because at the end of the day, I feel like everyone's just trying to figure out who's good and who's bad and if there's a difference. <laughs> yeah. So it's just always been the question on top of my head, like, who's the bad guys? Who's the good guys? Yeah. No one. I don't know. Yeah. In my warped head, it, it honestly is no one. Oh, I, and I say that right. because everyone could be justified in their actions. I mean, okay, if we look at the classical, uh, you know, Lucifer versus God thing, well, let's face it, God is supposed to be all powerful, all knowing, all loving, not in the Old Testament, but we'll just pretend he that doesn't exist for this. And, um, <laughs> okay. and angels are supposed to be servants. They're not supposed to have a will of their own. Exactly. They're just, you do what I say, period. Like, okay. And Lucifer somehow seems to have had a will of his own. And when God said, you know, bow down to the humans, not me, you know, like love them. And Lucifer is like, what? But no, I love you. Like, no, no, no. Love them. Bow down to them. I don't want to bow down to them. I'll bow down to you. Why, why would I bow down to them? They can't even fly, man. And, you know, so it's like, no. <laughs> and then it's like, no, I'm going to cast you out of here. You're done. Like, really? And it's like, oh, really? you know, so God's creation turned on him and was disobeying the father but then saying that lucifer loved his father so much he didn't want to give his love to anyone else and he was he's punished for it and he's made a bad mm -hmm. guy so you know it's like well if you look at it from that scenario i can't really blame him for starting a a war and wanting to get a little bit of vengeance on daddy but yeah at the same time you know he's your father listen to him respect him so <laughs> it's weird but <laughs> you know so i see it as there really isn't any such thing as good or evil it just is and it depends on your perception of things and and your mindset you know right yeah. i i i mean like uh, it's so many things I do that would be considered just terrible. Like for instance, I had pork today, and in Islam and Judaism, oh, man. You know, I'm a terrible, Dang. terrible person. So, <laughs> so I like, know I've been eating so much bacon, so I I'm right there with you. Oh hey, you, you see, <laughs> you get it though, man. <laughs> bacon is delicious. So I, I just, yeah. I don't think it's possible to label something good or bad. It, it just, you have to, in a weird way, you have to have both sides of the story. And of course you make up your own mind. Right. And I think I'm always looking for information that'll give both sides in, in a understandable way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, and you like, know, make me understand it from both sides and don't, you know, hate on one or the other. Don't say one's bad or the other. 
And before I forget, I, I do want to say that um, Wes Penray, so you guys can know a little bit of background, he is a writer, researcher, and he was researching ancient texts and trying to connect the dots because he wanted to rediscover the history of the planet and what may or may not have been interference by quote unquote extraterrestrials. And because of that, his interest in the subject, it went deeper and deeper. And his research shows that there has been extraterrestrial influences um, in history. And the thing is though, he believes that aliens are still here and they are still interfering, but he says that they are not to our benefit where, you know, now this is where I can understand stuff a bit better because I'm into the alien mess. Um, he says that they're not for our benefit. I say, well, it depends on what. But before we actually get into the alien thing, I do want to talk about some of his... Um, his research into the multiverse and, or the theory of different dimensions that run parallel between our, uh, with ours. Or so I know Niema, let's see, how was it explained? You're not a past. Well, oh, what? Oh, what? Go ahead. Oh, go I was ahead. just going to say, you're go not ahead. a past life person, but you are, a run along person, meaning that things are happening simultaneously side by side, not necessarily front and back. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, what, what were you going to say? Oh, no, no, I was agreeing with you because I think in some of the first material, he kind of goes over that. Um, but he also states that uh, reincarnation isn't a Thing. So you would reincarnate on different uh, planets or different pieces of the super domains, or I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to read it like five times to understand. But yeah, something well, along those lines. No, that actually makes sense. Uh, well, from certain points of view, because if you believe in the idea of star seeds, then it would be that you've actually reincarnated on this planet anyway, from being, uh, in this case, an alien on another planet. Um, I will give, um, let me, I'm trying to think of someone who claims to be a star seed. And I actually do know someone, but I don't want to say their name unless they're here to say it. So we'll just say, hello, it's Bob. <laughs> I am back and I like feet, but I am no star seed. Okay, sorry, Bob. You got to go then. Um, no. Niema, you know what? I'm going to use you as an example. All right, go for it. All right, so we'll say that here you are living your human life and everything, and you are a reincarnation, not of a human, but of some other type of alien. In this case, we'll say a Pleiadian. And what that means is your soul is not necessarily a human soul. The physical body is a human body, the shell that houses the soul, but your soul is originally Pleiadian. And in that case, you would be a star seed. You're planted here for some purpose, most likely to learn, understand, grow, move on to the next level. And and that and if you do pass on then what he's saying is since we run parallel and there is no pass you'll just move right next to right on to the next planet and it might not be earth it could be o orion beta sigma <laughs> or something and you'll still be a star so you'll still have that pleiadian soul that had a human experience, but now you are an Orion Gray or something. Oh, man. And, dude, they, <laughs> I think it's such a bad rap. Um, <laughs> but. Dang it. I just don't want to be short. Oh, <laughs> you see? Okay, so deviating real quick. You got to remember, there are several types of Grays. Okay. And um, <laughs> the short ones tend to be zeta grays but orion grays are tall 
Okay. But Maybe. saying that, Maybe. you're already, look into it. yeah, you're already short, so you know it's like, uh, what you what are you missing out on? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think that's what he's saying. Where, but, but then he, he might not be saying that. He could be saying something else. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got from it. Yeah. Too. Now, I am a believer in past lives, uh, di dimensional lives, and all of that stuff. The thing is, though, I always wonder, like, why would you choose this life that we are currently living now? Because it's like, man, this is kind of jacked. Yeah, I agree. Why? Why do we choose this? So, and the worst part is, it's going to take you about, oh... Well, if you're lucky, maybe 70 to 80 years to find out. <laughs> True. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. But I, I do wonder about that, though. And with, oh, hello, helicopter flying overhead. I hope you leave soon. I'm in the middle of something. Or is that a jet? What What is that? I don't even know. I almost want to get up and look. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, oh, what is that? I gotta see. I'm like a dog. Who? Huh? And I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> wow. what, what were we talking about? Niema, take it away. I can't remember what we were talking about. Go! We were talking about uh, parallel lives, dimensions, da 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 da. Oh, but you yeah. said you were a believer in, yeah, what, what exactly do you believe in? What, in oh, what oh, all of the above, past lives, future lives, side lives, all of it. Okay. Be because, um, I, well, you know, we have to go into thinking and trying to understand what the soul is. And if the soul is energy, a very mysterious energy, then it's everlasting and it can go here here and here like who's to say it can't split and be in multiple places at once and when we pass on you, that part of your soul comes back to the source and you learn from it. it's like oh well that was an interesting thing you know and and even even saying that though like with cutting out the past lives, because you know how some people say they have past life memories? Mm -hmm. Well, if we go and use your theory of the, well, I'm just dubbing it the side life, um, even then, if we look at it as the soul is able to split into multiple parts, and but it still has a source, well, when one of those side lives pass on, and whatever was learned goes back to the source. The source spreads it to the remaining souls or worker bees or yous that are still alive. And you get that information. You can still have that information of a life that you once had. That doesn't necessarily have to be in the past, but a life on the side. True. So that, that kind of works with your theory as well which it's very interesting because you're you're the first person i heard um talk about that mm -hmm. um in this also in this material he does talk about certain people that claim to be uh past people like uh, david wilcock uh, he's a author and people believe that he's the old, the reincarnate of Edgar Casey, along with a few others that are in the same thing. But something about that is I, I just don't know, even if you were, if you felt like a strong connection to a past um, psychic channel or whatever it is, why would you say that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy has a very peculiar look mm -hmm. actually he kind of 
resembles a gray alien. But <laughs> um, <laughs> you, they have a picture in one of the papers comparing David Wilcox's photo now to Edgar Casey, and they're like, "Oh, there's a resemblance." Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at but, it right now. Oh mm -hmm. my god! Yeah, it kind of looks like an alien. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be funny or mean, but no, of course not. I when I say like, I'm just curious as to why you you would want to state that you have a past life of someone else. There's certain uh, circumstances where maybe children come out of the womb, <laughs> and when they're like three, four years old, they start. Um, stating facts as, oh, I had, you know, I used to be so-and-so, this, that, and the third, and they can actually, that, okay, that's, that's interesting, that's, like, totally okay, but when you're a full-grown adult and you're stating to be someone, I don't know, I just find it kind of weird, strange, but no haterade. No hater. <laughs> I'm not casting judgment, I'm just... It's interesting. Okay, so call it what you want. <laughs> but it is interesting, and it's something that we probably do need to dig deeper into. And uh, I just remembered I'm doing my weakness right now, and that is trying to multitask. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sucka. However, if you... If you're living multiple lives all at once because there's no time, then it's in fact possible to have the same type of DNA construct screwed, <laughs> skewed across multiple timelines, parallel lives. Hmm. You feel me? That's a good question. Because I think he does talk about that as well. It's just so mind-boggling. Whoa! What the heck? I'm sorry. I um, I went. What did you do? I went to Wes Penray his uh, website because I also have some I um little things I want to discuss there. And I'm scrolling down and I see a picture of well, what looks to be some HLA. What's that? A uh, hot English. lesbian action. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's goddess statues. Oh. They're goddess statues, and yeah, I wasn't expecting this. This is in the feminine energy section, and I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Everybody, turn to paper 22. <laughs> so, yeah, I wasn't expecting that when I was scrolling down. <laughs> Let's... um. Let's talk a little bit about the hybrid program, which is something I know about. I've spoken about several times, and he talks about it. Now, he goes into a bit more, um, well, it's, it's not good, <laughs> we'll put it that way. It's a bit darker than what I normally would say, and that is, and he talks about control, which... I mean, he's not wrong um, when it comes to these advanced beings popping down, saying, hey, we're your buddies, we're your friends, and doing who knows what to you. And, <laughs> you know, well, yeah, and they're controlling you. And he takes it a, a, a step further because this goes, he goes into the theory that the greys are, you know, clones and borderline cybernetic. They can't reproduce and uh, all that good stuff. And it, it's crazy because there's things in here that I know for a fact are right because I've spoken to several extraterrestrial experiencers and they've dealt with some stuff. So I do know that there is some truth in here, but the problem is I also think some of it's exaggerated to where I'm wondering if he spoke to um, 
what type of abductees he spoke to. If he spoke to the ones who are gradually remembering what happened or the ones who are in fear. Because you, you really do have two types. And the ones who are afraid and in fear, what happens is sometimes your mind implants false memories and exaggerations to fill in the blanks of what you don't remember. Hmm. Yeah, so it's I'm curious to know who he spoke to and interviewed about that. And, you know, anyway, but with the hybrid, uh, uh, the hybridization program, he is saying that it's not necessarily extraterrestrials, but it's interdimensional beings who are seeking out certain blood relations. So we're talking about ancient bloodlines that have survived and still going on. I mean, technically, we're, we, we're all of ancient blood somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that they want to reproduce they because they can't do it themselves. And they do this so they can reincarnate into the same bloodline. Does that make any sense? Okay, uh, so so they f find people to. Okay, so I, are you gonna have to explain? <laughs> all right, think of it like this. Um, we'll say that you come from a line of ancient Aztecs. Okay. Oh, well, I mean they're kind of wiped out, but whatever. We'll, we'll just say you come from that line. All right, since you come from that line of ancient people and the bloodline is still there, in the past, one of the interdimensional beings or the aliens got it on with an ancestor of yours and they reproduced. And because they got it on, part of their genetic code is in your blood. And okay. for them to be reborn again reincarnate they need someone who specifically has that genetic code so the right type of body is born that their soul can use as a vessel otherwise it will be incompatible and it could have some type of issue okay. so they would seek you out and they would do the do and then they would reincarnate and there you go Hmm. Sounds sketch. Yeah, well, I'm I'm not a huge follower of that uh, ideal of the hybrid program because, like I said, I think it's a little too dark and it, I don't know, it's just, it's off to me and it contradicts other things that I've heard. But the thing is, though, they want to be born into this world because they want control and they want power and they they want to trick people into giving up their will their familiar uh, familiarity and they they want the planet i suppose you could say in almost enslavement and they're doing this by means of tricking us by saying hey we're we're your friends we're peaceful you know we we need your help and it's funny because this actually goes in line with what a lot of extraterrestrial experiencers say um they remember hearing that you're special like that's the key word you're special and you're going to do great things and we need you and part of that is to calm you down and play to the ego I mean, it's easier mm. to say someone is special and you've been chosen for a purpose and keep them calm instead of, hey, man, we just want your genetic juice. OK, so stop struggling. You know, it, oh, my God, if you hear that you're special, you're going to be more cooperative, like, hey, I could be a superhero, you know, true. So, I mean, OK, well, put yourself in that position. In this case, I guess it wouldn't be great. Something tells me you just, it doesn't matter what they say. <laughs> um, but <laughs> if a Pleiadian who, they look like elves, like literally they look like elves. If they, just blue, if they come to you and they're in your bedroom and everything and, 
you know, some hunk of a guy comes in and it's like, hey, I need your help. You know, you're special, Niema. You're going to save the planet. And I just need some of your eggs and, and you're going to save everyone because you're so special. And it's in your <laughs> blood and all that stuff. And mind you, you're also in a kind of day state. But wouldn't you be like, okay, I think I can do something. Maybe I don't know what's happening, but you're not going to be as freaked out versus this dude coming in hey you yeah you give me them eggs what <laughs> give me the eggs creepy so i just i'm just saying they appeal to the ego and i think, yeah i do think he's right about that they definitely appeal to the ego i don't think it's for world domination because i also say if they wanted to take over the world they can do it like the, if you're able to travel billions of light years, millions, whatever, believe me, taking over this little blueberry will not be an issue. Yeah. So it, it's it's weird. I don't know. Um, sorry, I don't know where I was going with that one. And <laughs> now you're <up> there, like. <laughs> no, you were just explaining hybridism. Like I, don't, I had no idea. <laughs> Yeah, and he also, Wes also says that they try to put in false beliefs of a golden age and that we need to forgive. And he's saying that they want us to forgive our oppressors, being them, so they can continue to oppress us instead of... Um, Instead of questioning why what's happening, which I do agree with him. You always should ask why what's happening, what's going on. And he goes into a little thing with the John Lear theory. And that is that the world will come under a false, um, a false invasion. Holograms are going to be used and the aliens are going to say, hey, we're here for peace. You know, just we, we just drop your weapons to disarm us and you know as americans like i ain't giving up my gun <laughs> you know <laughs> so, so that's so wait but that john lear uh opinion he he says it's going to be aliens or does he say it's going to be the government pulling it off both, <laughs> both? the government oh, okay. the government is supposed to be infiltrated by aliens and the government okay. will be the ones who will pull up the hologram saying it's aliens to oppress us. And some of it will be some of them, but, and then it won't. So it's a mix of both, mostly them. Right. Makes sense. So, and I do like that he talks about extraterrestrial influence because he goes back into the ancient histories of it where it's, if you look at the different hieroglyphs in Egypt and actually pay attention to, the, to their stories, if you go to Hinduism and when you hear them talk about floating cities that somehow fired weird sunlight rays and when you go into different Native American cultures and they say the sky was raining fire it makes you wonder like what the heck was happening like did you witness uh, extraterrestrial war like were these people uh space people were they actually influential were they the ones who were gods mm -hmm. you know it, it makes you wonder about that or at least it makes me wonder about it but if that's the case the, and they've always been here because he claims they've always been here, they're still here. Why did their presence suddenly seem to vanish? You know, that's what I want to know. You know, like, why would you pull the strings for five, six thousand years in the shadows only to let things progress and have humanity evolve more and more and more instead of just neutering it at the start? <laughs> yeah good point you know so that's one of the reasons why i disagree with him about the um the aliens wanting to control us and having some 
not so nice things planned because I, I truly believe it would have happened. I mean, and we can't stop it, especially if they're interdimensional or, you know, well, spacefaring. Mm-hmm. And then he, he also goes into some things about the Galactic Federation of Light. And unfortunately, that actually turned me off tremendously because I know about the Galactic Federation of Light. Uh, saying what, that, what paper was that in? Where is that? Um, this one is, give me one second and I shall tell you. Is it level five or was it four? Give me one second. It is. Where the heck is it? I know it's here. That's Lucifer. Right now. Leaving the Citadel. I think I think it might be the God. fifth level. Niema, what did you steal? Yeah, well, I mean, come on. We know you stole something. Let's let's be honest. I'm right like, well on a podcast well <laughs> <laughs> yeah man you know that you're well remember it's the multiverse so it's <laughs> they, it's a it's a conspiracy they know i'm on these websites right now <laughs> they're coming to get me actually yeah. strangely enough uh what if that was the case like if the multiverse is real you in another multiverse was a, a, a not another multiverse in a in another universe you're a thief and you actually oh, try I wouldn't it. doubt it. <laughs> I would believe that a hundred percent. Wait She's a second. Do you, sure. do you do you have to um <laughs> stop moments of kleptomania? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my <laughs> <It's an issue. laughs> Oh, that would be so funny. Oh my god, why can't I find this thing? Sorry, I kinda screwed you up because I was like asking for it, but the Galactic Federation of the Light. The Galactic Federation, first of all, it's a stupid name. Like, let, let's... It, it's a dumb name. I, I will never stop saying that. It's just ridiculous. And it has to do with, again, the alien agenda, which is supposed to be the taking over of the world. And... In this case, they actually, which is why it's so surprising that he would uh, talk about this stuff. And and again, I want to know who he's speaking with. But they talk about, in a in a real sense, good and evil, which is weird to me because like they legit have it. reptilians, evil giants, evil. Um, the Arcturians, good, and Greys, evil, Syrian or Pleiadians, good. And it's like, it's not that simple. And the belief is that this planet originally belonged to the Reptilians, I believe. And they Orion. were, yeah, they were kicked off. And then the, the children of God, you know, the angels or the Anuki, you know, they bedded the human women and they created the giants and they were banished to Nibiru. So, I mean, it's a lot of stuff there, but for me, and I could totally be wrong. Mind you, this is just my thought process. I think it is totally off and just made up personally. That's just how I feel about it. And Mm. I have no proof of this. I could just be speaking out of my bum, which, you know, it happens unfortunately and I still have not found this thing I know I'm not crazy but yeah it talks about the galactic wars and all that the Syrian Orion war you see and that was my problem with it or and with the galactic federation of light in general it's they make things too simplify it's too much good and evil and it's like It just does not work that way. Not with wars. It doesn't matter if it's intergalactic or not. Mm -hmm. Now, do I believe aliens have interfered with human history and throughout human history? Most definitely. 150%. Do I think they're trying to take over the world? 
No. No, I don't. Do I think they're here? Yes, I do. Probably more than we can imagine, but not as much as some people say. Do they care about us? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Are some people chosen <laughs> For specific reasons, yes. And then other times, some people are just wrong place, wrong time. Hmm. But, you know, one day I think we can go into the Galactic Federation because that's its own episode. It's just, um, it's pretty amazing in a weird way. It could be an episode of Star Trek. Pretty much, right? Writers of the Galactic Superwave. Oh, okay. Galactic. Yeah, but, you know, what happened was, I noticed, too, uh, going over this, he actually veered more and more into the alien stuff, which I wonder what influenced that. And, you know, he, he somewhat left the the spiritual things, just slightly, not all the way. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, like, what happened there? Something must have triggered that. He must have spoken to someone... You know, and then we have a thing that he talks about deity. And this is in paper seven of level five. And deities exposed in Hinduism and other Middle Eastern mythology. And um, that, oh, I wish Erica was here. She's so deep into that. And he was talking about the elephant and the owl and the owl is usually a representation of um of aliens for whatever reason like i don't know if you ever heard of bohemian grove yeah isn't that but that's uh isn't it masonry mm, no Bohemian. no, no okay. that one isn't ma uh, masonic that that is something else but uh, with Bohemian Grove, for those of you who don't know, it's actually in California and not too, too far from, from the place where I'm at. And what, what it is, actually not too far from uh, San Francisco either, it's in the forest. But for whatever reason, every president, every sitting president, and I'm talking about Clinton, Obama the bushes they've all gone to bohemian grove it's a getaway for government officials some world officials go there and it's very very odd and they do mock ceremonies there they seem to borderline worship some type of owl creature and mm -hmm. it's just really bizarre one of the presidents was i think was it truman one of them was running around naked and stuff and slapping people on the rear. And it's like, okay, it's something freaky with Bohemian Grove. And it only happens once a year or maybe once every few years. I can't remember exactly. But um, before he went totally psycho, Alex Jones actually went undercover and got into Bohemian Grove. And he had hidden camera footage of it. And I recommend everyone check that out. It's really good. And again, this is before Alex Jones went psycho. <laughs> well, uh, you know, he's a, I got to call it like it is. The dude kind of snapped. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Once he said that name, I was like, uh, oh, I yeah. I oh, I know about this. Alex. No. <laughs> It's be is before he snapped. But anyway, um, with Wes, though, I'm actually seeing a little bit of Alex Jones in him, like as we go on, because sometimes with conspiracy theories, you have to know when to dial it back and when to dial it up. Mm -hmm. And he's not dialing it back, but he is dialing it up some. But at the same time, I'm wondering if it's because of someone else's influence, because the papers, they really do speak to you on a spiritual level. And even if you don't agree with what's in here, you're going to come away with something, because like I said, I, I'm looking at the psychic vampires things as a metaphor, even though he's like, no, they're real. 
but I can still see the point he's trying to make. And I actually associate that with getting rid of that, those energies in your life that don't help you. Correct. You know, and yeah, I feel like it's a lot of content, but it's condensed to where if you're interested in any of these subjects, it's good to just look over it. Yeah. And, and, you know, he, well, like you said, you, you were very interested in like the, the Lucifer rebellion and the things that went down with that, you know, with what was his name? Mikael or Michael. I'll just call him Michael because, <laughs> you know, when I say Mikael, yeah, I, I feel like I'm European and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but but that dynamic. And uh, speaking of actually that war, it's so funny because if you look at the host of heaven, like the list of angels, apparently archangels aren't that high up. Really? Yeah. Uh, theoretically, Lucifer had a higher rank than Michael or Mikael, however you prefer to say it. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm hmm. So I, I, I think that's so interesting. It's like, what the heck? And then if you want to get even more into specifics, there actually isn't an angel named Lucifer. I mean, there is the morning star that they call it Lucifer that, of course, they equate to it. And the morning star is, <laughs> well, it's my planet, Venus. Um, hmm. Yeah. And, and Venus actually has a very strong connection when it comes to doing witchcraft. And for some hmm. reason, it also spins, count, uh, not counterclockwise, it spins clockwise. So that's another thing that's interesting about it. And it's and a lot of people say it's the most beautiful planet in our solar system or one of them, which I guess goes along with the lines of Venus slash Aphrodite. But, you know, it's debatable. So I just found something on fairy people. <laughs> uh Oh, don't call Daisy a fairy. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, but if you yeah. if you guys are interested, because we're going to start wrapping it up. If you guys are interested in Wes Penray and all his teachings, which is a lot. And believe me, we're going to revisit this. Um, the links are in the chat. And when I edit the video and post it up, they're going to be in the description. Because it's just, it's so much. And I'm captivated by it all. I don't agree with all of it. But I'm captivated with all of, especially dealings of the multiverse and um, mm -hmm. the ideals of things running side by side and not necessarily forward and back. Before we totally end, what else was something that captivated you with Wes, with the Wes uh, Penry papers? Herm, 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 herm. Yeah, you know, um, Honestly, it was just that remote uh, decision about uh, the founding fathers and whatnot. Well, and tell the us about it. The conspiracy behind that. Well, when I first started reading it, I just, I think I have this habit of trying to find the good and bad things. <laughs> so, so when I started to read uh, Illuminati and stuff like that, the hidden hand, I started to look into it and they all say, um, it's basically for the greater good or that it's all a game and we're all playing it out. And I guess that intrigued me. And as well, there's this service to self and service to others. And that kind of got my attention. So I don't know. Along those lines, I'm kind of into it. But I really just haven't made a decision on what I think about it. It's just cool to study. <laughs> uh, no decision will be made anytime soon, something tells me. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just up in the air about everything, you know? Well, you, you are a Libra, so I expect that. Or not a Libra, a Gemini. I'm not a Libra. A Gemini. I'm, I'm sorry, a Gemini. <laughs> I got my air signs mixed up. Forgive me. I hope this ambulance finds whoever it has been looking for. for the past well, hours. I guess they did. It just shut up, so. <laughs> 
Speaking of which, I'm I'm surprised the ice cream truck hasn't been by lately. Oh God! <laughs> and so I hope they're okay. I kind of miss getting interrupted <laughs> while doing something. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I I can see that. But you know, they they say you freaking um, wait, what were you? Gemini. There we go. Ah. Yeah, you're supposed to be airheads and you're flighty, but extremely intelligent <laughs> and inquisitive. And when you want to learn something, you'll freaking learn it and understand it. But you're just such an airhead. It's just. Uh... Eh, I don't know. Yeah, you're like. Oh. I don't know about anything. <laughs> so one of my good friends was a Gemini and um, we had some very interesting talks from the creation of life to life after death which i i'm i don't know i'm i'm still weird about because you know like they say everything has a, a beginning and an ending and yet they say time goes on forever but then there is no time so if there's no time <laughs> then there's no true ending, but then there's no beginning. So does that mean we are literally nothing? Or everything. Yeah, so it's it's something to think about. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think that's a good place to end it. <laughs> Thank you all for coming and listening to us discuss some of the research of West Penray. And join us for our little small talk, which we found out Niema doesn't have regular TV. <laughs> and don't forget to follow Unexplained Possibilities on Facebook and Twitter. So with that said, remember, guys, there are things that go bump in the night. Go ahead and tell them why. Bye, everybody. Bye.